this short, short session is going to go through how Mango handles incidents, how they are reported, how they are controlled, uh, the method of recording investigations and supporting documentation, and also the method of closing them out and also adding a, an improvement or corrective action that might be required as a result of that. So I'm going to run through two demonstrations, one being a near miss incident that can be closed off fairly quickly, um, and one a more detailed incident where there has been an actual accident. So here what I've done is I've popped, uh, jumped into the quick add area inside Mango um, and I've selected an accident or incident. This quick add area here, uh, the data that's recorded here um, to allow for incidents to be recorded quickly is exactly the same as you would do on the Mango app. So anyone that is licensed to use Mango also has free access to the app as well. OK, so I'm going to just give a brief description of what occurred here. So this we are identifying as a near miss situation in warehouse with a forklift. And we're identifying the type of accident is a near miss and is normally presented. Uh, these are adjustable fields which we would set up uh, when we are onboarding you if you are a new client. So identifying it as a near miss. And the source of this, uh, we are believing that this source has came from the person that reported it as a near miss. Um, however, you have the capability to select if it was one of your suppliers that reported it or even one of your customers that reported it. The other field in here allows us a, a bit of free text. So it could be a visitor that came to your site that was involved in an incident and you want to record their name. In this case, this near miss happened in our warehouse with one of our staff. So we are going to note down the individual that is reporting it and the date this occurred. So I've just received a call from Anthony. He's letting me know and he's described some of the details of what happened. So walking across warehouse floor to pick up an order. Lift approach, approach with no sound or identification look like operating outside of system of work risk assessment. So some basic information I've just got on the phone from Anthony. Um, going to identify who the coordinator is of doing this. So the person that's going to coordinate it is myself, but I don't have time to deal with coordinating at the moment because I've got a meeting to go to. So I'm going to record it against myself. It will come into my system uh, and go on my dashboard. Um, I'm also being made aware uh, through emails. So I've just picked up an email from Anthony and he's dropped me in a near miss. So he's completed the near miss observation report, um, which is a small card that we use. So I'm just going to upload that into the system so I know what it is and I can read some of the additional information that might be available to us. Um, he also has uh, advised that he has a picture. So we have got a near miss accident image. So he's taken a picture of the situation and sent it on as well. I just want to copy in one of the other senior guys in the company just to make them aware about it. Uh, because this is maybe a couple of times we've had this. So I hit OK and I'm now going to save. That is me now saved this incident and we can see we have a new incident number 85. So I go off to my meeting um, and come back and I decide that I want to take action on this at some sort of later date. Um, so what I want to do is I want to go to my investigation. This is the area where uh, I have to go to my area where I have to deal with things. So this sits within my investigation. If I was to click into the register, this contains all incidents that have been reported uh, and allows me to access it with my access rights. And this can be restricted, of course. But in the case of this one, we're going to be dealing with it just by myself. So 
I jump into my investigation, I can click on this directly from the email that I will have received from Mango about this, or I can click on it from my dashboard that I presented to you a moment ago. When I click into this area, I have to edit to do anything within Mango. What we see now is that the short form has now expanded into what we would call a large form or an extended form. And this is an area where we can add much more information. We can see everything that was entered in before, but we may want to add a little bit more information. Um, so particulars of the employer. So do we have anything different that we need to add here associated to this? Uh, so there's no difference uh, about the employer. This person works for us, so uh, we don't have to really add anything if we wish. The person reporting is one of our employees, not a supplier or a client. Where was the location? It happened, so it was in the warehouse and it was in lane AE. And we've got some additional information here. Hazard risk registers have been reviewed. Well, actually, we do know that has occurred. Uh, there's nothing associated to rehabilitation uh, and there's no initial investigation being performed yet. Um, we can, if we wish, note down some of the information associated to date of birth. That's not required. Um, this person is a warehouse operative. And uh, the person that was injured is the same person that's reporting. And his period of employment, I know that he has been working in employment for between six months and a year. Was there any treatment given? No, because it was a near miss. There was no requirement to give any treatment. We know the date. We also know from reading the email from Anthony that this occurred at 10, 10 a.m. And Anthony was working on a regular day shift and he started at seven. So we know that he had worked roughly about three hours prior to it happening. Do we know anything about the mechanism associated to it? Well, because it was a near miss, we may not record that information. There was no affected body part and potential severity. Well, potential severity in this case, because it was a, a forklift situation, it could be high. Um, we know what happened here with the description that was given over the phone to Anthony. We can now also add in a little bit more. So additional info. Um, so Fort Lift driver had headphones on, so we know that. And we know that this is related to equipment or machinery or plants. So we're going to say this is related to our plant and it was related to other plan. Obviously, we can have forklift and things like that in here. There's no days lost. There's no restricted work days. The category of this is it's a near miss, and we know where it happened. It happened within our European region, and it occurred at our Aberdeen area, and the department was inside our operations department. It wasn't associated to any projects or anything like that, so it's not applicable inside other. But we do know that it did involve a piece of plant and equipment, which was our forklift. So we're selecting that and this links directly to our plant and equipment register. And also we know that we have um, some forklift risk assessments in our system. So we've got here Fortlift loading and unloading, fortlift operations. So we know that this is to do with our fortlift operations and maybe also to do with the unloading and unloading activities as well. Nothing associated to costs here or potentially root cause. Um, what we believe occurred here is that the individual undertaking uh, the driving this vehicle, we know about it. Um, so we're making a call here that this incident is going to be closed down based on a known problem about the risk assessment. So we're going to note down here that if, the, if we have to reopen it and do an investigation, then we will send it to this individual to do the investigation. But currently we believe the summary here is that the driver of the forklift not following risk assessment plus risk assessment does not mention 
about driving using headphones. So we've got down here any additional people we can ask, ask to do something, and if there was an additional investigation to do, we can record what that is. So the summary here is that we uh, closing this near miss with action to update risk assessment. So the action to update the risk assessment, we are going to close this incident, but we are actually going to raise an improvement link to it. Um, so we're going to have a, a, an action put on our health and safety department so that they review this risk assessment in a bit more detail and send it out. So the comments here is that improvement raised on HSE to address concerns with risk assessment. It allows us to close off this particular investigation to do with this, but what we are going to do is add an improvement that is linked to it. So see issue with risk assessment. We don't have to put too much details in here because Mango links the two of these together. Um, see issue with risk assessment with an incident. We don't have to mention the incident number or anything because again, it links them together. The, the source of this improvement is a health and safety improvement. And the source of it came from a incident. So we can see here that it came from an incident and when it occurred it was today and details. So investigation into risk assessment required and updates made then oh, communicated effectively. Okay, so coordinator for this is going to be someone different in the organisation. So we're going to send this off to them. This is Callum is our health and safety person. So Callum is going to deal with this. And we're also going to copy in our head of HSE, who is John, um, so that they know what they have to do. We don't have to add any additional information. We just simply save that. It shows that an improvement has been raised and it links that improvement directly to this incident. So I'm happy to close this particular incident out. I don't need any more investigation done in it um, as an example. I've captured all the information I feel that I need and I'm now going to close it off. When I hit save to close it off, we can see here that this improvement is linked to this particular incident. So we have an improvement 262, which is linked to incident 085. And we can see that that incident is still, uh, this improvement is still open. So I'm happy that this uh, near miss incident, which was recorded by Anthony, has been closed off from a health and safety investigation point of view, and has now been passed on as an improvement activity onto our health and safety, depart safety department. So that was a small example of basically how an incident can be raised and then closed out. And it's important to point out and remember that the closing out of an incident can only be done by a coordinator, someone that has the right access rights to be able to do that. It can't be done by the person that reports the incident or a person that's doing an investigation, only the person that is deemed to be the coordinator for the incident. OK, so we can see now that if I go into my investigation here, number 85 has disappeared. I don't have any actions to take on this. It's been closed off and the improvement is in place. If I click into the register, we can see it's now greyed out with a tick, which says that it's gone to stage four, corrective action and close. For the purposes of just this quick demo, we can jump into the improvement module, go to the register, go to the most recent register and the most recent item, and we can see here that this is this particular improvement, which was raised against that action, okay? Okay, so we're gonna leave the improvement. That's a completely different demo we're going to do. We're now gonna run through another example of something that's a little bit more serious. So in this situation, what we have is we've got an accident that has been reported and it's a genuine accident, okay? 
So uh, someone hurt from a serious electrical incident in workshop. So got a phone call from someone who's telling me that there, there's been a situation. So there is a, a medical treatment case or a restricted work case or serious harm. We don't know at this point. This is what we believe that this person requires to uh, be hospitalized. So we've got the employee's details that's reporting it. So it's not the person that's been hurt in this case. Um, it's someone within the company that's made us aware that this issue has occurred, someone that's working there. And they've told us this information happened this day. What was it happened? Well, at this point in time, Callum's informed us a little bit of information, not too much, unsure, but looks like misuse of equipment and possibly equipment not suitable. It's investigated. So we've got the information that Callum gave us over the telephone. We're now going to send this off to our coordinator, uh, which is this guy that's going to deal with it. And of course, it's a pretty serious incident. So we are going to just copy in our health and safety guy. And we're going to copy in um, our guy that works in operations, just so these people are aware this situation has occurred. With the information that Callum spoke to me over the phone with, he also did send me on um, some incident photographs. So we've got some images here which he took associated to it. So we're just going to add those images that we got at the time. And we're going to save it. So this is the information that's been saved on the system as the incident requirement to load up into the, the uh, incident report. However, as this is quite a serious one, the decision has been made to get on it right away. So I may have gone out, had a quick look to see the situation, recognise that um, the person that's been hurt has actually gone off to hospital now. So that's all been controlled by the health and safety department. What we want to do now is we obviously need to start investigating it in a lot more detail. So when we go in here, we're going in back through in the same form. It's the long form. Um, so we, we want to kind of capture a lot more information. So we know it was an employee that was reporting it. The location, so it was in our workshop. We only have one workshop. Any additional information? Uh, do we have some medical documentation? Uh, initial investigation. So there's been an initial investigation. We know that the hazard and risk resistors have been put in place. There's a, there's a plan been put in place in terms of sending the person to hospital. Uh, the affected person um, was this individual who's gone off. Um, we've got their home details there as well. This person was working as a maintenance technician. And got the person is an employee of the company, not a contractor. He's fairly new in the company. So he's only been in the company for a couple of months. And we're looking at what treatment was given. Well, we actually had this person had to be hospitalized, unfortunately. Um, we've got the date of occurrence and we've got some time here. So we know that this happened at 2.40 p.m. The person is on a day shift and has been working roughly for about seven hours or six hours ahead of the incident. Do we know anything about the mechanism of what happened? Well, we believe it's to do with energy. We believe it's an electrical issue. And the agency of the situation associated to it is, is it to do with mobile plant, powered equipment? Well, we believe it's to do with a powered equipment or appliance, but it obviously needs more investigation. The body part that was affected. Well, we know the person is complaining of chest pains, and we also know that the person uh, mentioned something about their arm. Um, so we're just going to note that down at the moment. And again, this information can be changed. Do we know anything about the nature of it? Um, well, we believe there are some burns. We don't know too much yet. And we believe the potential severity of this is high. This person, we don't know their condition. So what happened? So we've got this information. I've done an initial review.
the initial review identified loose wires on the drill being used and no checks were evident. In particular, evidence of inspection sheet or have sheet in place. And we know what the type of this is. Yeah, so we know again that this is to do with equipment in this case, uh, or, or tools, and the code associated to this is it's to do with our powered hand tools. We don't know anything about restricted days yet because we have to find out more information. We do know that this is a medical treatment injury, and we know that this occurred also within Europe, but this happened inside our Glasgow branch, and this happened again, it was in our operations activity. It's not associated to any particular project, so we're just going to say not applicable. Was there any plant and equipment? Well, it was associated to some plant and equipment, but that particular item of plant and equipment is not on our equipment register. Uh, we've already noted that it was a hand drill. Um, to do with risks, we're not aware of any risk assessment for this. Possibly that's something that's an issue. We don't know the root cause or any costs involved. What we do know is we've got uh, an accident pictures that we can look at. And also we've got some information here that we want to assign this for an investigation. So we're going to sign this off to this particular guy and this person is going to do an investigation, but we're going to keep on copy our health and safety guys. And we're also going to keep on copy our operations. And likewise, we've got a feeling this could be to do with maintenance. So it might be worth just making sure the engineering team also know as well. It's quite serious, so we want the investigation done pretty quickly. So I want to see that these guys get on this this afternoon or at least by Monday and get back to us. Um, and we put down here the comments of what we want. Uh, urgently require detailed investigation and ensure to capture hospital reports where available. So instead of closing this off, we're now going to go to the next stage, which is investigation and suggested root cause. So myself on this system, I'm the coordinator. I'm now going to save this. And this has now gone to a different stage. So if I go back into my investigation, we can see here that it's now gone to stage two investigation and suggested root cause. The person that's undertaking the investigation is uh, not myself. It's been done by someone else. So someone in my team is going to be doing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump into that other account as if I was acting as the investigator and just show you what that looks like. So I'm just going to jump into this quick demo account here. Sorry. We jumped into this account. And what we have here, we can see on our dashboard is I have something that needs my attention. I will have been sent an email as well. So in this case, I'm going to jump straight from the dashboard to it. I know it's pretty urgent to get onto it. So I've gone out, I've maybe taken some additional photographs. I've started investigating it and I've written a detailed investigation report so I can read all this information but as a as a investigator I cannot change the content I don't have the access rights to change any of this I simply have the rights to go down here and add additional information and also maybe give my summary sorry my my comments associated to the investigation itself so I'm simply going to see here please see attached additional images and also investigation report. Uh, so I may also say here, could not get hospital report, suggest someone more 
senior obtains this. OK, so I may also want to say here, looks like the issue may be related to equipment, maintenance and inspection by user. So what I have to do here is I have to just simply go and browse and add my investigation report. So here I have my investigation report that I have completed. I update that. And I may also have some other information, pictures and things like that I may want to add as well. At this point, all I want to do is finish my investigation, save it and send it back to the coordinator who's overlooking it. So this is me completed my investigation and suggested some root causes and suggested that people look at my investigation report. So if I jump back to my dashboard, we can see now that that incident has been removed from my to-do list. It's no longer required for me to do. An email has gone back to Chris, who is the coordinator, and Chris is going to be the person that's going to look after looking at the investigation report and maybe making some decisions. You may want to have a chat with me, you may want to uh, you know, find out a bit more information, but it's back with him. So you can see here it's now added onto my dashboard. So I've had it back to me. I am the coordinator, so again, I can change information based on the, the uh, investigation report that I've reviewed. I'm, I'm quite happy and quite comfortable with what has been sent to me. However, I do now have an email in that allows me to upload some additional information. And one of those additional bits, bits of information is the hospital admission uh, report. And also I have here an additional bit of an incident investigation which came after the event. So I'm just going to add these things as support to this incident as we go along. So we can see here that I can now put a summary associated to this. So I may say in this situation, uh, we have concerns associated to the equipment maintenance, and it looks like the contributing factor is twofold. We may see here, uh, non-maintenance of drill and uh, misunderstanding or competence of user associated to inspection requirements before use. So as a result of that, I believe that there's a requirement to possibly raise two improvements associated to this. Um, this has been completed, but I'm going to copy in uh, associated to this. I'm going to copy in our engineering guy uh, because he needs to know that his team are maybe not doing the necessary uh, requirements that they have to. And also I'm going to copy in the HR team because I want to know what happened when that person was brought on uh, and also the operations team associated to what work that was maybe uh, what descriptions were given to them and what they should be doing on the job about inspection of equipment and things. So I've got some comments here that say uh, this investigation is complete and person has person is out of hospital and remaining at home for a few days. Improvements raised associated to maintenance and competence induction. So we ultimately want to close this off to say we're happy with what we've got. We've got all the information we need, but we want to raise some improvements. And we also might know at this point in time that there are a total number of lost days. So we might say at this point, if we had the information, there's going to be lost days. And we think when this person comes back, there could be a couple of days restricted because we might have to educate them and spend some time in training and things like that. So as I said, we're going to raise two improvements against this. So one is associated to maintenance. Um, so serious incident, 
contributing factor maintenance of equipment. And it stems from this health and safety issue. And the source of this came from the incident. And we know the date that it occurred was this day. Details, uh, improvement required on maintenance of handheld equipment. And we know the person that's going to look after this is the guy in our engineering team. You know? So the coordinator for this is going to be Callum. He's the, the engineering guy is not on the list. Um, so we don't have to add any more information because it links to the incident. We're just going to simply save it. And we can see it's added a new number and saved it. And we actually are going to add another one which is associated to this. So serious incident associated cause related to induction competence. We know again associated to the health and safety. We know that it was the incident and we know the date was today. And the details are here that uh, investigation identified an appropriate induction training and competence assessment of this person. And in this case, it's going to be someone else that deals with this inside our HR department. And we're going to copy in the head of HR because this is quite a serious one. And we don't have to add any more information because all the pictures and incident reports and everything are there. So we can see now that we've added all the information, we've gone through the process. There obviously could be a lot more data goes in here. I'm not saying the investigation, this is not a training on investigation, it's a training on how Mango handles it. We're now saying that we're happy to go to the next stage, which is closing this off and waiting in the results of the improvement activity. So we've now closed it off and we can see here that there are two improvements associated to this particular incident. Inside the accident incident module, we have the areas where we can go and look at the register. We have a bunch of charts that we can work with and incident data rate. And of course, we have our dashboard that presents us with uh, information around incidents. We have our executive dashboard that gives us a rolling list of information. So we have here the monthly data and the 12 month rolling data. And then we have here a bunch of charts and things which at this stage in the, the executive dashboard cannot be modified. They just give a, a high level uh, presentation. Um, but what we do have is inside the My Charts area, we have different charts that we can update and we can see associated to uh, health and safety, compliance, events, risks, incidents by body part, incidents by location, by department, by branch, etc. All of these charts are customizable and um, appropriate for whatever you require. OK, so I hope that that has provided you with some insight into Mango uh, Accident and Incident module. And this recording uh, will be available on YouTube and our LinkedIn channel. Thank you very much.